Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing on with my series called How Is It Done? And I'm going to be showing you how I got Caranthia Tower to rise from the mountain. So I have done a video before which is to do with translation. However, this is going to include a lot more stuff. It's going to be much, much more modular. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to show you first of all is literally the tower rising. Now, if you have not yet played Caranthia Tower Reborn, then I strongly recommend that you go and do so before you watch this video, uh, because it might spoil some of the awesome. Uh, now, this is something that a lot of people have asked me in the past. How on earth did you get that tower to rise from the ground? And quite simply, it's not that difficult. There is one part that I will talk about shortly when I go to actually look at how I did it, which I will explain why it took so long to figure out. Um, but yeah, for the most part this is not too difficult to do and the script I'm going to be using will not be the exact same script that I use in the mod, although you can go and look at the source files for that if you wish. I have rewritten the script, I have taken out some of the stuff which is very specific to this mod alone and then I have replaced a lot of it with sort of generic naming systems and also a very modular format where you can change individual values very easily without doing any script editing. So, I am, like I say, first of all, going to start by showing you the tower actually rising from the mountain, what we're going to be achieving. We're going to be doing the majority of this, and it's going to work just off activation like it does here. If you do want to change exactly how it works, what triggers it, like if you walked into a trigger box, you'll have to do that stuff yourself. But for the most part, this, this is going to get you most of the way there. So, I do apologise for my shadows. They're god-awful. I don't know what's going on, but my game has not been right for years, and as a lot of you know, I don't play it. So, less of the blabber. Let's go ahead and do this. So, we've got Luke in there. And so, we are going to have the tower rise up, quite simply. And then we'll hop in the kit, and I'll show you how to do it. Now, when I do show you the demonstration, it's not going to be with an exterior. It's going to be a demonstration inside of an interior cell. And we're going to set it up near enough from scratch so that I can sort of show exactly how to get it all done. So there we are, Cranthi Tower Reborn discovered. Now stuff like that I'm not going to be showing you how to do. It's quite easy, you just enable sort of a map marker that's not there initially and stuff like that. But for the actual rising, the rocks that fall and also enabling some additional stuff, that's what I'm going to now go and show you. So that's not too, uh, not too difficult to do. So let's hop into this creation kit. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, like I said, we're going to be inside of an interior cell. It's just a test cell. And I've gone ahead, got the model of Caranthia Tower Reborn. Of course, this can be anything that you want. That's what this tutorial is all about. If you want something else that does something very similar, you can go ahead and place your own mesh in. So I've got the tower here, and just below it, I have placed a tiny version of the tower. Now, you're probably thinking, what the hell are you doing, Dark Fox? What is this all about? Well, basically, what we want to do is we want a version of the tower under the ground that rises up and stays there. Now, you think that's pretty simple. Why don't you just put the tower in the ground and then translate it to a marker? Well, yeah, I'd love to do that. And I did try and do that. And it took four hours for me to figure out that there seems to be a size limit to items that can be moved. So using the translate to script. Uh, if an item is too big, the creation kit and the game engine refuses to move it. So I came up with a little trick. And the trick is that you create a small version of the thing that you'd like to move. It doesn't matter what scale it is, as long as it's relatively small. So the scale that I've gone ahead and picked is 0.1. And what you do is you start it moving to where you want, and then you scale it up while it's moving. And you do it fairly quickly. So you give it about one second and then you force it to scale up because there is a function for scaling items up and down to specific values. So what I've done is I've got this one here at 0.1, like I say, and then I have one here above it in the actual position that I want the tower. And this is scaled to normal. And make sure it's scaled to normal, scaled to one. And this needs to be initially disabled also. So let me just go back in. There we go, initially disabled. You have two options here. You can either not use this model here and you can just move this, scale it up and have it stay there and have this one initially disabled and use it literally just as a marker to point out as to where you want to move it. Or you can actually have it so that this one moves, gets resized, stays there and then disables itself and enables this model. Now, the reason why you might want to do that method is just to be 100% sure that the, this is not going to revert back to its 
previous state of where it was and you'll know that the one that's enabled is the one that's going to stay put so i'm not entirely sure but for starters you'll see in the script in a moment i have commented out the enabling and disabling of both references and i'm using this at the moment just as purely as a marker so there's a few other things that i've gone ahead and set up there are some things in this script that i'm going to allow you to easily do and that is having things like rocks falling or whatever items you might want. So obviously this is usually placed on a mountain. Loads of rocks fall down. It's cool. So I have three X markers here. And each of these are going to be spawn locations for four rocks. Which is really cool. Now along the top here, the other thing that I do with CTR is I have a load of stuff on the balcony. Including the actual doorway in. Because some stuff is not actually part of the mesh. And I also have things like railings, the atmospheric adjuster and whatever else. So if you want other items to go on the top afterwards, which the player's not really going to be able to see because they're so low down unless they're TFC'd and cheated. Uh, if the player wants to go up and, and sort of see stuff, then cool. Well, basically, anyway, don't know what I'm on about now. Lost me train of thought. But anyway, I'm going to want to enable additional things as well as this mesh. So I'm going to want to go ahead and enable whatever stuff I have up here. So just for this, I've got two crates and a barrel and I've linked these to an X marker so this script has a very modular sort of system like I say so you can just set an object reference to be enabled and you can always edit the script and add more if you wanted so the other thing is sound I have got the sound in here as well you can use your own sound or vanilla sound whatever you feel fits best for whatever reference you're having move so just to sum this up what we're going to do what i'm going to guide you through the script in a minute is we are going to have an item down here start off small start moving go big move to this location we're either going to enable or disable or just leave the original and then we're going to have a bunch of rocks falling we're going to have a nice sound fire off we're going to enable a reference and there's also a couple of additional things which i'll show you in a moment that we're going to do and it's dead simple. All this is going to happen from the activation of a button. And like I say, you can change it to whatever you need if you want something different. So I've gone to my button here. I've gone to the script. So I've gone ahead and just added this script. I've made this brand new script up from the CTR script, but it's a little different. And usually with these videos, I don't go through and explain the entire script. But to be honest, this is quite the biggie. So I am going to go through and explain what this stuff does. Now, I won't go through too much in regards to the properties and such, but I will tell you that most of these have defaults. They all have nice tooltips that you can read, and you can always come into the script later on if you know what you're doing, and you can change things around a little bit. So, yeah, we've got all th sorts of things. Uh, the first thing is this is an activator for the item that you want to spawn because the rocks that I make fall are activators. If you want to use other things that move, like movable statics, you're going to have to change this and restate it to something else now before i continue the other thing i will mention that i tend to like to mention in these videos is do not use this script exactly because that's going to cause issues if other people decide to use it in their mod and one person changes it it could potentially overwrite yours so make sure you create your own script and just copy and paste the whole chunk of this into it with your own script name make sure you do that and we also have the disclaimer for credit and all that so that's pretty much the properties. They're all pretty much laid out, set out. You don't really need to change a lot of this stuff. There is a web address here, which is in the tooltip. I haven't actually checked if that works, to be honest, but uh, we'll see. There is a web address here that you can copy and paste, which is for stats, because there is an additional option, like I said, where you can go ahead and increase a stat. So for Corinthia Tower Reborn, as soon as you've discovered the tower, it's included in the stats of Skyrim as an additional house that's owned, or, well, property, really which is really cool so that's one thing so i'm just going to go down first of all what i had to do because i didn't set up a whole camera movement thing because it was hell and i wasn't entirely sure how to do it uh, i needed a way of getting the player to look at the mountain and hint to them that the tower was about to rise so they didn't miss the action so you can go ahead you've got debug notification that can show up in the top left corner which is cool so you can fill that in that's a string you have the ability to shake the controller so if people are using a controller then you can make it shake and have all the vibrations and rumbles and cool effects. Now, I know some of you might think, oh, well, I don't use a controller, I'm a keyboard and mouse kind of guy. And I'm like, well, that's cool, that's fine, but do take into consideration a lot of people, including myself, actually, do prefer to use a controller for various reasons for Skyrim, so you might want to add that in anyway, have that compatibility there for people. 
Now you also have camera shake, so you want to shake the camera so it gives the effect of holy crap, something cool is happening. And you'll see that all of these have their own individual little options, which are set as float values, which you can easily change through the properties without editing the script. So we've got things like the strength of the controller shake, the time that it lasts, and the same with the camera, how long, where it takes place, so usually on the player, and you, you've got like various things like strength. So the next thing we have to wait a little time until we actually set the sound off because I like the ground to start rumbling first and then you'll hear a sort of a, a sound fire off and it rise up from the mountain. Uh, so you can go ahead and set this. This is a default of three, but you can change this if you want. So you want if you want the rumbles to take place for a lot longer and hell, you can even edit this and add an additional sound just before. So sort of ground rumbling and then the tower rising rumbling, but that gets a bit more detailed. So we've got rise sound dot play, so that's the main sound for the whole thing rising. Uh, then we've got rise reference, translate to, and then rise reference final. So I am referring to the two versions of the model here, the small one and the large one. The large one is the final version, the small one is just the main reference that we're going to be moving. So dead simple. So then you just wait a split second, like I say, and it's going to scale it up. So it says rise reference, set scale to one. So it's going to put its scale back to one so that by the time it's moved up just a little bit and it's popping out of the mountain, it's not that small. It's at full scale. And it's just a way of blagging the engine to actually move it, get it to shift. Uh, if that had not worked, then I wouldn't have been able to get the tower to rise out of the mountain. Uh, luckily, that worked. So we have uh, another three lines here. This is getting an item to spawn from a location and the amount that you want to spawn, really easy. Then we have another utility.wait time. This is going to be the amount of time that it takes for your reference to move from down here and reach the top. So you can time it with your sound and you can time it with, with other such things uh, until the enabling and disabling stuff takes place. So this is going to be a lot of trial and error basically and some of this is explained in the tool tips themselves. So next we have the rise reference enable. This is one that I have commented out here. If you decide to have the enabling and disabling happen, just to make sure that it stays put where it's supposed to, you just wipe those little semicolons out. And the reason why you may well want to try and avoid using that and trusting that it doesn't revert back to its previous state is you can get a very strange little flicker when it's swapping over the two references, even though one's enabled before the other one. That's what that wait bit's for. So additional reference dot enable, that's our crates and stuff, whatever you want around the tower on the top of it or whatever. And then complete global dot set value to one. This is useful in CTR because I had a value that said various things cannot take place until the tower has been discovered. That is just sort of a, a true or false button. Uh, it's just a tick to say, yes, you've made the tower rise. Awesome. Now things can happen. It's just for conditions. You don't have to have that if you don't want. But if you do have things that you want to restrict the player from doing with conditions, then that's good to have. Now we've got game dot increment stat stat to increase and how much buy. So this would be, say, houses owned. And then that would be how much you're actually going to increase it by. So usually one. You can increase all sorts of stats. And that's what that links for. It's just a whole list of different stats that you can change in the game that you'll set in the string. So really simple. Like I say, unless you want to get into more detail and change things around a little, there's really no real reason to edit the script other than to make sure that it's your under your own script name. So you go ahead, add. Give it a few seconds. You might get an error, just yes to all on it. And then you'll go new. And you'll just paste all of that in and make sure at the top it's the name of your own script that you make. So once you've got it in there, you'll see that you've got all these properties. As you hover over everything, you've got pretty much everything that I've just gone through and explained to you. It's all in tooltips. It tells you what all the defaults are. In fact, a lot of this you can pretty much change unless you really want to get fancy with it and set everything to your liking. So I'm going to go ahead and set some of this up. Uh, first off, additional ref. I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to select my... Ooh, where's it gone? DFX crate. So I have given everything a good reference name so it's easy to find them in the sort of uh, properties window here. So I can just easily select things. I have my global already created. So I went ahead, created the global. I'll show you that. Went under MISC, went under global. Just type DF. DFG complete. Zero. There we go. So by default, it's off. And we've got notify message. This is where I can type in here. The mountain begins to shake. Then we have player ref. You can go ahead, auto fill that. Then we have rise ref. So the rising reference is the small one at the bottom. So I can go ahead, select that. 
obviously you can select reference or you can do it this way and just click which one it is in here so I've got the actual risen version here rise sound i've already gone ahead and got my sound together or you can choose a vanilla one i have my rise speed this is how quick it's going to go up now it's currently set default to 500 i want it a little bit quicker than that so i'm going to put it to about a thousand and hope that's about right rise time that's set to 10 by default so how long is it going to take now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a load of these, all these fancy camera settings and everything I'm going to leave with the exception of shake camera lock. If you hover over it, it says that it recommends that it sets it to play it, otherwise it's not really going to shake it because it won't know what it's doing. Uh, so I'm going to select any and then select on reference at the top should be player ref. So go ahead and do that. Uh, if we carry on down, we have spawn amount. So how many things do I want to spawn? Four. Uh, spawn item, I am going to select what I want to spawn. So if we go under activators and type in fall, scroll down, it should be here somewhere. So trap falling rock. And we'll go for large. And then the spawn location. So I can go ahead, select my X markers that I showed you earlier that I'd created. Stat to increase, well the amount sorry, by one, and I'm going to uh, increase houses, uh, houses owned. You've got to make sure you get the name exact, so visit that web page, otherwise it, it's not going to increase it because it won't know what it is. So wait, rise, sound, how long to wait until your reference begins to rise? So three seconds I said before you actually get all the sounds and all the coolness happen, and I'm going to leave that default. And that is that. It is dead simple to set up, dead easy to do. And now what we're going to do, go ahead, save it, and we're going to pop in game and hopefully see that working. And here we are in game. And as you can see, I've got my button here and my tower will be under the ground. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will just nip down there and show you that. So there it is, a mini tower under the ground. Kind of cool. And if we just go ahead, activate the button. Mountain begins to shake. My controller is vibrating. The tower rises up. Unfortunately, for some deranged reason, the rocks aren't working. It's a little bit hit and miss. You know what? I got the timing pretty good on that. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of trial and error to get things to work and to get things to happen. Sometimes when you are spawning things like these falling rocks in, you may need to make your own version and turn off certain settings for havoc. Uh, it, you know, you've got to mess with it. It's quite awkward. Uh, some rocks like to fall, some rocks don't. Some rocks like things to hit into them before they go anywhere. So if you have trouble with it, you can either mess around with the Havoc settings on the rocks themselves and make sure you create new IDs, or you can just leave them. Uh, you can also go ahead and do other cool stuff like smoke effects and things like that, and you can really get quite creative. But that is how Caranthia Tower was risen out of the mountain. That's how it was scripted. It's really, really simple when you look at it. Uh, the only thing that was really the problem was the fact that it wouldn't shift objects that were too large, like I showed you. So there we go. And that is it for another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. If you need any of the resources like the scripts and such, you can either go ahead and download Project Modularity or you can get the script standalone, which will be on my Google Drive, which you can access through my website on the resources section. And that is at www.darkfox127.co.uk. You can also go ahead, check out all the social media and that good stuff down below and come along and join our community discord where we have well over 200 members at the time of this video anyway. Uh, we talk about modding, share our creations, you can get help and all sorts of other good stuff. You can also go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.